Hello everyone, I'm Biman and today I've got another Conan Exiles tutorial for you. This time I'm going to build a small Aquilonian house. I create a lot of different things, so hit that subscribe button and notification bell, or check out the rest of my channel for more Conan Exiles content. This is a small, self-contained house, roughly based on ancient Roman domus. It contains all the basic crafting stations and some space to hang out with your friends. Let's start building. First I'm making an 8x8 square. The whole house will fit here, but some additional space will be required later to make a decorative facade. This very regular and simple shape comes from the fact that domus were built in cities, as opposed to country houses, villas, that were a bit more complicated and far larger. Also it's the bane of Latin students everywhere. Domus is an irregular noun that actually still has the locativus, and to make it more confusing, both singular and plural nominative is domus. Truly blessed are the English, whose language thrives without visible declension. This is not an exact reconstruction of an ancient Roman home. It is merely inspired by one. The changes I've made reflect my own subjective preferences, but also I had to consider gameplay requirements, and I wanted to keep this house small and simple, so that you can for once build something that I show here, without spending ages getting resources. The floor plan is very simple. Right beyond the entrance is a small hallway leading to the atrium. This is the central part of the house, serving as a living room and quite literally as a hub connecting all the other rooms. On the opposite side of the atrium is the tablinum, an office of sorts, but also a reception area. In one of the corners is a kitchen, and the remaining three corner rooms will become bedrooms for various members of the household. One of my goals is to achieve a contrast between how the house feels when seen from outside and inside. To make it seem protected, defensible and sturdy, I've decided to limit the number of windows and place them only on the second tier of wall tiles. Then I've placed the roof tiles over the whole thing, leaving just a single empty tile for the roof axis above one of the bedrooms, and the compluvium, an opening above the center of the atrium that is 2 by 2 tiles. The facade continues the aforementioned themes, with the pillars and statues giving it a majestic powerful feel, it due to the warm tones of the fire and kind, benevolent looks of the statues themselves, the otherwise imposing walls are transformed. No longer intimidating, they seem to protect the peace, privacy and safety of the family living inside, commanding respect rather than fear. In order to maintain symmetry, I've opted to use two doors. Conan is wonderfully anachronistic, and I've always preferred multiple doors with Trumeau rather than a larger gate for foot traffic. Trumeau is a little pillar in between doors that provides support for the tympanum. It's usually found in portals of Gothic cathedrals, so not really an ancient Roman thing. The facades of ancient Roman domus were usually much simpler. Quite often the rooms on the sides of the entrance hallway were not connected to the house at all, and instead were lent to be used as shops, with separate entrances. Since I'm building a freestanding house and I'm actually just playing with, rather than strictly following the broader classical style, I've made the facade much more decorative. It still needs one more element though, the pediment. In the simplest form it's the triangular part of the facade above the cones, and its decorated central part is called tympanum. I need to mention two things here. Later on tympanum became a common thing in both Romanesque and Gothic portals. You can easily tell them apart by the shape of the arch. And if you try searching for images, that's what you'll most likely find. Second thing, classical architecture is a fascinating subject, but describing it requires a lot of specialized terminology, so yeah, I know that I extremely simplified it, but honestly this is not the right place to discuss it in detail. The pediment is also perfect to cover up a small loft and roof access. This will be a perfect place to hide away all the crafting stations without sacrificing any of the rooms below. As a side note, is it just me, or are you guys getting this Dwemer Ruins vibe too, from the Aquilonian tile set? The house is now complete, 
so feel free to decorate it as you see fit, or stay for a few more minutes to see how I did it. Let's start with the atrium, as this is the centerpiece of the house. This room will be a compromise between the game's lore, my chosen inspiration, the ancient Rome, and of course gameplay, as there is not enough space in this house for pure vanity space. Ancient Roman Domus was full of spirits and other mystical entities. Manes, Lares, Penates were all engaged in various aspects of day-to-day -day life of the household. Spirits of one's ancestor were also worshipped at home, their death masks hanging on the walls, usually in tablinum or special alcove in the atrium. So, I've decided to turn the first alcove into a shrine dedicated to the ancestors, but opted for statues instead of masks for a very simple reason. There aren't any in-game, and they are not exactly an obvious item to add from others. Like I said, I don't have space to waste, so I've placed planters around the shrine to grow herbs. The Aquilonian tileset with its cold color scheme, geometric designs, feel cold and unwelcoming. This worked well for the exterior, but I need to change it here so that this place actually feels like home. The combination of warm yellow light, chaotic organic shapes and vibrant green of the plants should do the trick. On the opposite side of the atrium in the second alcove where Lararium, the shrine dedicated to household deities should be, I've placed a statue of Mitra which functions in game as water source and added more planters. Some of the items I'm placing here might be missing from your game. I'm on PC and I've got a bunch of mods installed. The full list is, as always, in the description. Next, I'll need Entertainer. Exotic Dancer doesn't really fit here, so I'm going to change her animation to something more appropriate. Now this will look really cool, too bad there won't be any music. Actually, this is really baffling decision by the devs. They created all the assets, the harp model, animation, even recorded a couple of notes. There are placeable items with troll slots in the game already, so required code is done as well. All they had to do was record a song or two, then it's just a simple matter of using any crafting station as a template and changing a couple of variables and we would have a nice harp player to entertain us with some soothing music. But nope, it's Conan. So full frontal nudity and strippers is the way to go. And yes, I do appreciate the irony of using a sex mod to make the dancer less sexy. Well, there's of course the possibility that under the hood it's all spaghetti code, and that's simply impossible to implement. In that case, God help us all on the patch day. Right, back to the atrium. Normally underneath the hole in the roof, compluvium, the floor would have a shallow pool called the Impluvium, where the rainwater would gather. It was made with porous rock so that the water would slowly drain to the cistern below and be filtered in the process. Right next to it was a hole in the floor big enough for a bucket to be lowered, to get the pure cold water from below. This won't work in game. In a bigger house I'd probably place the fountain here. It was actually done in some of the wealthier Roman houses, but in this case I decided to omit it and combine the atrium with the dining room, triclinium. Tablinum was the office for the head of the household. It was overlooking the atrium and often only softly removed from it. I've decided to place another set of double doors here, or rather door frames, as I wanted the atrium to be visible to enhance the contrast between the two rooms. This is the room where clients would be received. The Roman patronage was a system of creating and maintaining a social circle broader than family, and even though there was a strict hierarchy, both the patron and client had obligations to fulfill, so it was mutually beneficial relationship. I want this room to reflect the authority and position of the patron. Basically, I want it to feel overwhelming and hostile. So I've exploited the general design of the house to end up with exterior wall textures here, which are cold and unwelcoming. The clutter on the desk is completely one-sided, notice just the single cup, and I decorated it with trophies of predatory animals, snarling and baring teeth at anyone on the other side of the desk. Clients sometimes belong to the same social class as the patron, so I've placed a slightly more friendly reception area on the opposite side of the room. Let's move on to the Kulina, kitchen. 
Obviously, this room's design is dictated by gameplay. As for the ancient romance and food, there are a few misconceptions and myths I'd like to address. First of all, there was no eating and purging cycle during feasts. Vomitorium is a passage allowing crowds to leave stadium. The English verb to vomit sure comes from Latin vomo vomere, but they don't mean the same thing. And those feasts actually never turned into crazy orgies you've all been hearing about. Sorry. This widely believed lie is the result, among other factors, of a propaganda war between late pagan and early Christian authors who spewed ridiculous accusations at each other, including blood drinking, infant eating, and incestuous orgies. Now, if you want to read something that's actually true for a change, there's a Roman cookbook usually referred to as Apicius, but you might come across the title De Recoquinaria as well, and the English translation is free on Project Gutenberg. I'll leave the link in the description. The cubicula are private bedrooms for the household members. I've decorated each one in a different way. The first one became the master bedroom, the second is for kids, and the third one a servant's quarters, because I wanted the transition from nicely decorated interior to purely utilitarian and gameplay-driven workshop in the hidden loft to be soft and gradual. This allowed me to have all the necessary elements for basic gameplay inside the house, without completely sacrificing the theme. Obviously there are more things to add, but they'll have to be placed outside. A house like this can be a good starting point for a larger, more complete, in terms of gameplay, base. But for this tutorial, I wanted to keep it simple, so I've only placed some trees around it to blend it with the terrain and added just a couple of items outside, so it's not just green and boring. And that's it. Thank you for watching, have fun building.